going on welcome to the mix class this is the mix class for trap gods i'm going to show you guys how to mix from the pro tools preset template i've been given a lot of questions about okay now we sound great recording now how do we polish our product i'm going to help you guys take it to the finished product so the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up our session all this money is the is the exact same hook that I did it with did it on. I just did a verse on there, and I don't think we need is a verse to really guys show you guys how to mix a whole record. So let's open that. No. Now the first thing that you guys want to do is we open this session. Whether you are recording it yourself you're putting a song yourself or let's say for happenstance that you guys are just you know you're mixing something that somebody gave you with a trap sound so what you want to do is you when you open a session you want to take a full listen to the record so you can get kind of an idea of the direction so let's do that first let's see where we're going with this hit return space bar Okay, so when we hear that, we hear the direction. It's um, we have a lot of auto tune on there. Another thing that I hear is it's more melodic than normal. It's not more rappy. It's more melodic. So also we want to kind of go and address the pitch issues. And also there's some timing issues. So the first thing when you start recording a record or mixing from the template is that you want to kind of be mindful. You want to go through the same process as mixing a regular record is that you kind of want to see the direction. So by playing it, um, you get a good idea. So what I'm going to do is to keep this going, I'm actually going to bounce this out. bounce the disc and what I'm gonna do is convert after convert during bounce mm. desktop I'm gonna say this is my rough So now that we got that bounce, what we want to do is we want to import that in the session. I should have just did it um, while I was bouncing, but it's all good. It's okay. Do that done. You can do it to the audio folder. Hit open. We want to put our rough up top. And I like to put the master at the bottom to kind of clean things up. The only reason that we want to have our roof right there is sometimes we could strip down the mix, even um, mixing from a preset so far that we kind of lose the feel of the record. Because a lot of times when people send you the record, they already love the feel that they've had. 
So you kind of just want to go back and reference from that um, to kind of get an idea if you ever get lost. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put that out of the way. And what I like to do is I like to just start organizing. Now that I've been making mental notation, I want to start organizing the track. So first thing first is the technique that I like to use. I like to put it on slip and I like to put my tempo marker on the first bass kick. Or either you could do it at the beginning too, but usually sometimes what you would have at the beginning of your track, you see this little space. So if you are going to do it at the beginning, make sure you just drag it here. Let's increase the size up here with this little tool right here. And just put it at the very beginning, right there. You could do that too, but I just like putting it at the first bass kick for some reason. Somebody taught me that technique, a, a good friend of mine, a good engineering friend of mine taught me that, and I've been doing it ever since. So it works for him, it works for me. So let's do that. Use the magnifying glass even further. Boom. So if you already have the preset temp the preset um, trap guides, which you should, you should already know how to set the tempo. But we'll go over it one more time. So what we can do is, so what you want to do is you want to click this and you want to tap T. So if you double click this little diamond by the tempo and you, you double click that, it'll come up with this tempo change bar, this tempo change box and just tap T to the beat and it'll give you your tempo or around it. So the next thing you wanna do is we wanna make sure our MIDI control, you go up to the top right here by the transport and you make sure that MIDI control is turned on. You always wanna have this either on or off. I usually like to keep it on because I can always turn it, the uh, metronome off from my click track, which comes on the, uh, which comes on the preset as well. So just, to, and then using that as a reference, you can make sure that um, your tempo is right in the pocket. So let's check that now. Well, at least the beat is definitely on. Um, the beat is definitely on. Now, what we want to, why tempo is so important is that the later on in the mix, we're going to use the tempo to be able to fix the vocals, especially the timing. So the timing really will affect everything. The kind, the timing will also kind of affect the pitch as well. So having your timing in the pocket is definitely um, advantageous. I would say without setting your tempo, you can't even mix a record. Well, you can, but it would be definitely hard. The second thing I like to do in organizing, I like to find the key. Because a lot of times what I've done is I've mixed a lot of tracks just to only get to the song into the record to find out I was in the wrong key. So um, I want to go to auto-tune and see what the artist recorded in C minor. So what I like to do is I just like to double check with mixed and key. And then also, another site that you can use to reference is you can go to audiokeychain.com if you don't have mixed and key. I know mixed and key is like around $40, $50, something of that nature. You go to add file. You go to your session. And usually you can just hit size and it'll be the biggest file. So hit that. That's my beat. Okay, it's telling us F minor 144. So it got the tempo right. And I'm not saying that mixing key is 100% on because sometimes it's off as well. But I like to usually say it's more right than wrong. So I usually give it an 80% chance that it's pretty much on. So we're going to go with that. Because especially if you're not, you know, somebody who's very like in tune with music theory, you don't know scales, trust music, or either you could double reference with audiokeychain.com to find your key. So we're gonna, let's go with that. <laughs> 